In 2020, Elon Musk made a comment on Twitter which turned out to be somewhat prophetic. He said that 400 watt hour per kilogram would be possible for mass production batteries, not just in a lab, but mass production in around 2023, 2024 or so. Welcome to the channel, everyone. Thanks for joining me. My name is Ben Alexander, and I'm based here in sunny Brisbane in Australia. Here's my garden. I left a window open on this video. I usually don't, but I thought it could kind of makes for a nice backdrop. Uh, I post videos on the latest EV news every day, so stick around until the end and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Grab a drink, sit back, and let's figure out the nooks and crannies of what's going on. CATL, Cattle, the company whose batteries will be found in Teslas sometime in the future, uh, starting with their vehicles in China, confirmed uh, recently that they will be putting their new battery into production, mass production, later this year. And their new batteries with 500 watt hour per kilo, thanks to their new cathode technology, primarily cathode technology, but there's a whole bunch of tech in there. Uh, currently, Tesla batteries are about uh, at maximum 296 watt hour per kilogram. The US laboratory called Argon, I hope I said that correctly, Argon, um, in the past couple of weeks also announced that they have produced batteries in the laboratory with 1200 watt hour per kilo, but they aren't approved for mass production. This is a big deal. Um, of course, packing in so much energy into a small space is quite tricky, so safety and tests are paramount before ever even considering putting them into a phone or a car, for example. Uh, the cathode is basically one of the parts inside the battery that is integral to the density of the battery. So as you can see in the pictures, uh, if they can use a better material and a better chemistry around it, and fit more of that material into a cell, you'll get more density. That's how this kind of works. So basically, after this year, batteries will actually be capable of holding 80 or so, 80 or 90% more electricity in them without weighing any more, which means that an EV can drive further because it weighs less whilst having more energy. So it's kind of a win-win, obviously. I suppose some people are going to be wondering why it hasn't happened sooner given that the uh, media for the last five years has been saying that there is huge sums of money being pumped into this industry. Um, and I should start off by saying I'm not an expert in batteries. Um, I'm just informed. Uh, so as far as we know, the battery tech that can hold more power like this has actually been around for years. Um, but it takes a long time to iron out some niggles, no pun intended and to run intensive safety tests, for example. I remember uh, something like six or seven years ago uh, hearing the boss of a big battery company saying that uh, this sort of technology, this is a paraphrase, this sort of technology was in labs, but it is doing things that we don't want, or it's being unpredictable. I'd like to express my gratitude to all of the supporters on Patreon, YouTube memberships, and those who've joined me uh, on buy me a coffee. Links to these are below in the description. Uh, your support enables me to continue creating these videos, which involves dedicating a significant amount of time to thorough research. And my objective is to provide you with accurate information that uh, may not be readily available in the mainstream media. So the cheapest and easiest way to help is just by pressing the like button. Uh, this action tells YouTube that people appreciate my videos, which makes a substantial difference. So your support helps me spread information that promotes the adoption of electric vehicles, particularly in the affordable vehicle segment that requires a boost. So thanks again, let's carry on with the video. So unlike almost every other news article or video that talks about new battery technology, uh, to get your attention probably, this one is actually now going into mass production and will find its way into society at some point in the future. I'm not sure of the limitations that it may have at all, um, or how it works in extreme cold or heat, for example, but they've assured everybody that it is comparable to LFP batteries. It's really good technology. Um, it's really safe. 
So these new batteries integrate a range of innovative technologies, including ultra high energy density cathode materials, innovative anode materials, separators, advanced manufacturing processes. Uh, these advancements contribute to its excellent charge and discharge performance, as well as enhanced safety features, which is a big thing. We'll get to that in a second. Each one of these are incredibly important. Um, so imagine it's like a cocktail, and at the end it has to have the right amount of the different ingredients in it to make a good drink. That's kind of the idea here. They'll make this product, put it into vehicles and sell it to companies such as Tesla, for example. Um, to be a good product that people want, will want to buy, it needs to be reliable, fast at charging, fast at discharging, very safe, able to stay fully charged for long periods of time, hold a lot of energy, not weigh a million tons. Um, each of these, each single one of these is very, very important. So that's why this technology is really hard to get right. It's just sort of like a balancing act. According to CATL's chief scientist Wu Kai, this new battery technology breaks the long-standing limitations that have hindered the development of the battery sector and it paves the way for a new era of electrification centered on high safety and lightweight design. Pretty bold climb, I think. They will not just be focusing on the automotive sector, they say, uh, but also things like aeroplanes, and they've also talked about uh, the high level of safety in these batteries. This is something in the presentation they've really gone into. Uh, they really milked it, you know? Safety is a very tricky area to get right in battery tech. For example, if we use a battery on an aeroplane, it can still set on fire. So you can imagine how bad that would be. Um, even inside the large metal case that they typically use in cars, for example, uh, because battery fires often start because of an exothermic reaction inside the battery. So maybe they have a fairly safe and effective way to put out a fire in that sort of situation, or they've got some ideas on this. This can be very dangerous in batteries, including um, cobalt, for example, um, because then the battery can produce an oxygen, which then fuels the fire, so it's a much more dramatic fire when there is cobalt involved. Uh, one of the best things about LFP batteries is that they have a much safer chemistry, which typically won't smoke or do anything at all if you pierce a cell with a nail, for example. But they can smoke a little bit, but I'm talking a similar amount to a cigarette. Not much smoke at all. The BYD blade batteries, with the chemistry being good um, and the casing, the way that they case the chemistry in the battery, um, they don't even smoke when penetrated. I don't know exactly why, but they don't. Um, so I'm not sure on how safe this new technology is, but it sounds as though they're comparing the safety with that of lithium ion phosphate or LFP chemistry. Uh, just to reiterate, I'm really not a bit battery expert, so please feel free to chip in with your thoughts in the comments because some really interesting comments are often written on my videos, so feel free to chip in. If you enjoyed the video, then please click the like button for me so that YouTube know that people are enjoying it and subscribe for more daily videos about electric vehicles.